Hello everyone, Sons and Duck 2, and welcome to another look at some configs. We're going to be looking at the WTBW Core Decoration Machines and Tools configs. Obviously, I have videos covering all the different blocks in each of those different modules, so yeah, only configs for the, this video specifically. So we'll start off with the Core Client ones, which is pretty much for tooltips specifically. So for full durability, burn time for say tiny coal or the blaze block for example, possibly even for regular coal and charcoal or other vanilla fuels, tags for certain items as well as tag shift. So I'll just go over those real quick. So for the fuel one, it shows that it burns for 200 ticks and I do have the advanced tooltip shown which is just obviously F3H. If I remove that, it won't show them in GEI, or it won't show them in the inventory. If I enable that, which this is part of all of the events tooltips part, obviously, then it'll show this information. Now, with the config, of course, it'll prevent that from being shown, even if you do have advanced tooltips enabled. So if you don't want to see the burn time, because you don't need to know that information, you don't care about it, you can just turn it to false, and you won't see that information. But if you still want to see durability information, or others, then you can do that. So we just go to say a swapper here, you can see 250 durability. And if we go to a pickaxe, you can also see that information as well. If we turn tooltips off, no mention of it whatsoever. So that's what the core one specifically is for. The tags, my guess is for certain other things. So if we just check here. I guess it's the target block or spawn range information. So, for example, if we just go to advanced tooltips on its own, it will still display that information, it seems. So we'll just disable these and see what actually happens. So, we'll just go load here and remove the weather. And we'll check. So, nothing to the tools at least. Let's see, still seeing certain of that information there. Okay, so if we just remove that one. I guess the shift one is if it's for going off screen or something. More so. So, we'll just wait for that. And that's still saying power usage and a few other things. My guess is if you have certain other tags that are MBT related to these rather than the other additional information telling you what it can do. So I guess this may be enchantments on tools or if you've got a specific block you've bound with the um, spawner for example. So if we just went with cobble, place this, do that, target block is that then, okay. So maybe not. Some other type of information, of course. I do have tooltips hidden, that's why it's not going to show much else. So I'm not too sure, but I guess it's just certain MBT data um, is visible there to be tweaked. If we go to the common one, not the client one, of configs for the core version of the mod, you can determine the world gen aspects, so specifically the ores here. So if you want to change the per chunk aspects of copper, change the vein size, the start of the heights that the copper appears at, and then the highest points at the end. So from bottom to top, we've got it appearing from 24, which is around about goldish level, and you've got the start of it, uh, sorry, the top portion being 64, which is around about iron. And you've also got the ability to enable or disable the ore generating entirely, especially if you have other copper ores in your world and you don't want to have multiple, you can easily just tweak this and remove the, this version of copper. And you've got the same for obviously cobalt being obviously a lot less common. You've got smaller vein sizes. It appears at 80 in the nether, which is probably why I missed it in my tool specific video covering the cobalt ore. And then you've got the world gem option for that as well. For decoration, you've got the ability to enable or disable the 
stones. So this is particularly marble, basalt, and limestone. And obviously the same information as the um, ores that you can tweak, such as the perch chunk, the vein size, range at which it starts spawning, and then the uh, Y level that it starts appearing in, and then the end level it starts appearing in, and the ability to disable it if you want. If we move on to machines, you have the ability to tweak certain aspects of things such as the furnaces, vacuum, pillar, and more. So you've got the ability to set the speed for any of the furnaces, and this is in ticks, not in seconds. So 80 ticks, 40, 160, and then 10. So I'm assuming that the higher it is, obviously, the, the longer it'll take, obviously. The fewer it'll be, the quicker. You've got a block blacklist for certain machines, such as the block breaker and quarry, so it won't break bedrock, and portal frames if it happens to come into contact with one on a stronghold. Nether portals, so this will be the nether portal block, not specifically obsidian. So if we just go to a portal, which I don't have access to right now. This will be the inside one. Oops, just happened to mess that up. So it would be this one specifically here, which obviously I can't use creative on, but it would be that. Other than that, you can tweak the vacuum, specifically for its range to reach things, or we'll check for at least. And then the tick rate at which it approaches to suck things. So it'll probably suck things in every 10 ticks, or check every 10 ticks, and then go within a range of 6 blocks to reach things. You've got the pusher and puller tweaks. So the strength of it pulling or pushing, the range at which it will actually push or pull, and the tick rate for how quick it'll push and pull. For redstone specific blocks, you have access to the timer specific tweaks, so it'll repeat every 10 ticks the actual timer and the duration of each pulse of the timer. You've also got the ability to tweak the quarry in many ways, such as the power usage for each, so this would be 100 energy each block it breaks, the actual ability for it to break tile entities, such as chests, spawners, furnaces, I think also count in that. I don't think this counts things like minecarts, I think, but I may be wrong about that. But it doesn't do this by default, so if you are okay with it breaking loot chests, for example, or spawners, then you can set it to true. You have the max size that the quarry can obviously break things in, so 128 blocks and you've got a range of up to 1024, so quite a lot of chunks there it can mine in. Other than that, you've got the ability to set the speed and ticks between breaking each block, uh, obviously in ticks, not seconds, and you've got the capacity of the quarry's battery, which you can expand if you want, rather than being, I'm pretty sure that is 10 million, I think? Uh, sorry, 1 million. And then you have finally the block specific things you can tweak, such as the tiers upgrade size differences. So tier 1, it'll have an upgrade size of 3, 9, 17, and 33. So if we just place the quarry down. Now I haven't actually covered this yet, and I haven't covered machines, so apologies if I screw up any of this stuff yet. So there's the following slots there, which I'm assuming is for the upgrades, and that's all the output, and that's the energy. And my guess is that maybe you have more that it can do with the upgrades? I'll just check real quick. So, let's see, let's power change. Uh, the upgrade block specifically, so that increases the quarry size, so that's for tweaking those and what they can do. So if you want it to be that tier 4 can expand the quarry size to 33 blocks, and you can. I don't think that's 33 chunks. Um, so you're just changing what these bigger ones see place on the outside, not the upgrades. That's what I was getting confused with. So there's that. And then we also have the tools, which you can change the hardness 
or blacklisting of blocks such as bedrock and then you've got the ability to determine the multiplier as well for the hammer in terms of what it can break for blocks so that's for the hammer, swapper, and watering can as well as a few others. So, you've got the ability to tweak the watering cans, whether or not it can spread grass with its water, instead of just only crops. you got the refill rate being relatively quick at 30, but it can obviously be smaller or take a lot longer to refill. You've got the moisture option, so if you want farmland to be wet by the watering can, or you want it to be that it only just does the crops and it doesn't change the water at all, you just have to still rely on the water in the middle, you can tweak that. There's also the specific stats of the individual watering cans, such as the diamond one, where you've got a chance of 35 to further a growth stage, so it's obviously going to determine each 35 ticks I assume, when it will actually increase a growth stage, or it's a 35% chance rather than just um, sort of cycling ticks, something actually I should think, um, whether it needs water, okay so use water at all, have the, yeah. okay so this is durability of water, so if you do want it to be that you have to constantly get water from the watering can, or not, so the ender one obviously doesn't use water, the other three tiers do, you can completely remove this entirely and just have it, you just use it, no problem. No durability or water consideration at all. You can tweak the drain rate at which water is consumed per tick, and the maximum amount of water stored in that specific tier of watering can. And you also have the ability for auto harvesting to be applied as well. So if you've seen the core video, it shows obviously the Ender one having an auto harvest ability. Which if we just do that now, you can see it'll harvest for you. So if you want the other ones to as well, and you don't want to have to wait until you get to the Ender tier, then you obviously can enable that for the Diamond Quartz and a few others as well. And you've got the radius at which you will be giving an effect. So you have up to 15 blocks, or 15 by 15, I assume. And then you can change that if you want it to be higher or lower. And you can obviously have that applied to quartz, ender, and basic. And then we finally have the magnet, which you can allow for picking up of blocks to then fit in your inventory. The radius at which the Q Oh, sorry, in a cube radius, so the radius at which the magnet will pick things up, and the tick rate at which it checks for magnetization. And then we also have the client and common ones as well, which visual options, okay, or a reordering of those apparently. So this is for client, but not for the core, and you've got common which is pretty much seems the same as the individual ones, but just in their own. So this is probably more for service specific use rather than just say individual modules, I guess, or something. Uh, we'll check the server config under my save I've got here, and we'll see. Nope, so none of them there, so that's possibly it. Thanks so much for watching, and goodbye.